Hey everybody, welcome back. We're on Unit 3. The title of Unit 3 is National Income and Price Determination. Okay, The way that we are focusing on national income and price determination, the vehicle that we're using to focus on those is the ASAD model. So we're trying to understand the ASAD model. This is part 4 on the ASAD model. We're switching now to aggregate supply. Okay, This is our aggregation of all the suppliers of final goods and services we're aggregating their supply, their production of goods and services. Now, the synonym that we're going to use a lot of time for aggregate supply, because that's a little jargony, okay, a term that we don't fully you know, understand because we haven't used it all our life, is total production. That's, those are terms we're a little bit more comfortable with. So it's perfectly fine to substitute aggregate supply with total production. So when you're thinking about it, trying to understand this stuff, it's perfectly fine in your own brain just to use the term total production. So aggregate supply, once again, the aggregation of the supply of all domestically produced goods and services is the total production of all domestically produced goods and services. Okay, That's the curve we're focused on right now. Here's our graph right now. I'm just using the graph just to focus on AS right now, just AS. Once again, vertical axis, price level, weighted average of all prices of all final goods and services. Horizontal axis, using dollars that have been adjusted for inflation as the unit of measurement. So we're thinking of dollar amounts here, okay? And what are we measuring in dollar amounts? Well, air supply or total production for right now. In fact, if I want to be really good here, I put a quantity of air supply. So I got quantity of air supply equals our total production, okay? So all we're thinking about the horizontal for this video, since all I'm focusing on is AS is we're just thinking about this axis as measuring total production, i.e. the quantity of air supply. Well, what is this video mainly focused on? It's the shape of the AS curve. As you can see, I don't even have a curve on my graph right now because I want to talk about what is the shape of the AS curve. Well, here it is. It's upward sloping. But why, therefore, is it upward sloping? How, why does the quantity of air supply increase when the price level increases? Or another way to say it, why does the quantity of air supply decrease when the price level goes down? Okay, it's upward sloping. It has a positive relationship between these two variables, between the price level and the quantity of air supply. What does that mean? This positive relationship? They go up together. They go down together. Okay, what's the causal relationship? What are we supposed to be focusing on? Are we supposed to be saying that the quantity of air supply is changing the price level? No. Our independent variable is the price level. Our dependent variable is the quantity of air supply. What we should be focusing on is when the price level changes, how does the quantity of air supply change? Okay, that's what we're focused on. So to understand this, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that the price level goes up. Okay, so we have an increase in the weighted average of all prices of all final goods and services. Okay, so the prices of final goods and services goes up. It's a terrace price, meaning everything else held constant. What well businesses to do? Now, what I have here is that this PL sub zero, I went out a certain amount. I want you to think this horizontal distance, okay. This horizontal distance is some amount or some quantity of air supply. So we are producing this amount. What will businesses do? How will they respond when the price level goes up? Now, for some of us, the answer might be, well, they're going to produce more. That's for sure. If the price level goes up, I know they're going to produce more. That is the answer, but the reason for the answer is not near as simple as that we think, okay? Because here's the deal. If the price level went up and the prices of all the inputs to production and every other price out there that a business must pay in order to produce their goods and services, if all of their cost of production went up at the same time as the price level did, guess what the, what businesses would do? They would produce no more, zero more than they were. Okay, It's not that they produce zero, but they would, their change in their total production would be zero. They would continue to produce the same amount if the cost of all of their inputs to production or all their production costs stayed the same. And that's the key. You see, when the price level goes up, their cost of production does not go up at the same rate or at the same time. There's a lag, okay, which we actually call the short run in macroeconomics. 
So this video is super important to get down, okay? Because it's the thing that's gonna introduce you to the concept of the short run in macroeconomics. And I just kind of hit on it, okay? Here's the deal, when the price all goes up, we're gonna say there's gonna be this lag, this lag in time in which the cost of production do not go up at the same time as the price level change. There's a lag between the price level, the price of final goods and services going up, okay? And the cost of, of and all the cost of production for a business, okay? And that lag gives us what's called the short run and it's the reason the AS curve is upward sloping. This is a hard video, but let's break it down. Let's make sure we get it. It's not going to be that hard, okay? Look, when we think about the price level, the price of the final goods and services, we should associate that with revenue, okay? Because these are prices of final goods and services. So I'm going to go ahead and put the price level right there with revenue, right? When I think of, you know, my revenues as a business, it's determined by the prices of the goods and services I'm selling and the quantities that I sell them in. But price is certainly one of the key things that affects my revenues. So when the price level goes up, remember Soteris Bravis, everything else held constant, what's going to happen to my revenues? My revenues are going to absolutely go up. Okay, I don't even want to make that an arrow necessarily. I just want you to know that when the price level goes up, the revenues are going to go up. Now, my cost of production. What are my costs of production? Well, there's a lot of different costs of production. There's wages, which I'm going to write in here, and then I'm going to put ETC. Let's talk about this Excedra right here. What else is there? There's the cost of my inputs to the production process. There's my interest payments, my lease or rent payments. There's a lot of different costs of production. But of course, I'm really highlighting these wages because that's a really important one. When the price level goes up, wages don't go up at the same time. They're sticky. They lag behind, okay? Now, Sometimes I might use this constant sign. It's not that they remain constant, it's that they lag behind though. That's the important thing. But for right now, just for simplicity, I'm just gonna put that bar right there, okay? So price level goes up. In the short run, wages aren't really going, they're gonna lag behind and they're, they're not gonna change for a while, okay? If the price level goes up, businesses don't immediately start paying all their workers more. So there's that lag, all right? So when the price level goes up, some of their costs aren't going to change as fast, and therefore their profits are going to go up. It will become profitable to produce. And when it becomes profitable to produce, what will a business do? They will begin to produce more. They will continue producing as long as it's profitable. And it just became profitable to produce a little bit more. So they're going to produce more. So when the price level goes up, revenues of the businesses go up, since some costs lag behind, businesses will indeed produce more. And there it is. When the price level goes up, so we've got us going vertically, okay, going up, so our dot is up, that's the price level going up, we will in fact produce more. And if I connect those two dots, if I connect these two dots, we will see what we call the short run aggregate supply curve. The short run aggregate supply curve, all right, is upward sloping. In the short run, of course, by its name, okay? What is the short run again? We've defined it, it's important to grab onto it. The short run is the time that the cost of production lag behind changes in the price level, okay, which affect revenues. And what's our number one cost of production that lags behind? It is wages. So how is the short run often going to be defined for simplicity? For simplicity, it will be defined as the period of time that wages lag behind changes in the price level. That's what the short run is. And it gives us our upward sloping supply curve. Now that's a hard video. This is one of the hardest concepts for a student to deeply understand. Might be worth watching this one again. But anyhow, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.